Hey there, readers and storytellers, and thank you for joining me on Story Unfolding, a show about changing the world through creativity, ingenuity, and intellectual discourse. We share meaningful conversations with creators, creatives, and dreamers who take it upon themselves to make a difference in the world. We have an influence on the world around us, regardless of our intent. The only way forward is by confronting the hard truths, asking the tough questions, and letting your voice be heard. We are better together each day with our human story unfolding. Now, I am pleased to have Rebecca Robinson on with me today. Rebecca Robinson is a developmental editor who enjoys working with new and unestablished authors. She is currently launching her own business called First Write Editors, which is offering uh, editing services and advice to authors in the affordable rate. So Becky, thank you so much for joining me today. And why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I opened up the company to try and help authors at rates that are a little bit below the standard that you'd expect and um, purely because I feel like a lot of people sometimes can't afford to reach that um, rate and it tends to affect people from lower socioeconomic backgrounds more than it does with people in upper or um, middle classes because they can afford to pay those rates whereas people from lower socioeconomic backgrounds can't. So um, I hope to open the business so it could help people who aren't as privileged um, get the editing advice they need. And that's why we offer generic services like a review or a report of your uh, manuscript, which lets you know kind of the generic problems you're having with your um, work or any um, bigger areas where I feel you could potentially improve or you can have more in-depth editing, which does cost a little bit more, but shouldn't. Um, you shouldn't have to sell your house to uh, manage it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's amazing. I know I, uh, so I met you on just a random Facebook, it was kind of serendipitous, it was a random Facebook post I think you made, or mm -hmm. I, I don't even remember. Um, but yeah, we, I know I had an instant connection with you, and I, I've been fortunate to have you as an editor on my series, uh, my Keeper series, and you have been absolutely astounding. Um I loved, I think, uh, for me as a writer, uh, working with you, it has been a very personal thing. So you, you really, um, you really took the time to get to know me and dig into, you know, my motivations and my desires as a writer, as opposed to sticking me within a strict paradigm or um, structure. And I think that was really valuable for me. Um, I know you mentioned it in the written portion, kind of why you tend to do that um would you like to talk about that here and um, whatever you think's best yeah yeah go ahead go ahead so yeah um i feel like everyone has their own voice and their own essence and that shouldn't really be cut or edited to fit into what um an industry standard is i think you can make very successful books um harboring the strengths of your voice and utilizing them um but unfortunately i think sometimes you hit um, a wall when you're editing and people start to try and fit you into cookie cut cutter molds because they know that successful they don't want to push the boundaries and see what the next step is what the next successful book is they just want to replicate what is already um working in the industry and i really like to be contemporary and i like to try and push those boundaries and see what the next step is so to speak if that makes sense yeah yeah that's awesome now what inspired you to go that direction because you're coming pretty you're pretty close out of university right you're just coming out of school um, I, I use university because I'm learning from you. I know you're from uh, from England, so um, yeah. I hope I did that right. But yeah, so you're you're pretty fresh out of school. Um, so what? Because I'm pretty sure, at least my experience in school, I know they really focused on you know conventional standards, and this is the way you know the industry is supposed to be done, whatever discipline you're in. So how did you go from there to kind of breaking the mold? I did have a lecturer who I remember said to me, um, you're amazing with voice, you're a really good voice writer. Um, she went, you do have to edit it heavily. And then I ended up getting a contemporary professor who did um, contemporary young adult, which meant his work was kind of a little bit out there. It wasn't what you would normally expect to see from a book. And he always wanted to push us to do that a little bit better. Um, so I started experimenting a lot with my own fiction and then we started um, critiquing each other's work um, within the class and I remember I used to come up with things like 
I'm reading this. It sounds like Game of Thrones. I would love to see something like a working class um, farmer's voice in like this medieval kind of and coming up with different um, ideas about how someone can kind of differentiate from the bulk of replicas that we've already got going around the industries of really successful novels. And um, one day I was at home and um, a girl from my course had emailed me and she went, he has my notes. And in her notes was Becky's such a badass editor at the top. And I'm thinking that feels so great. That feels amazing. And then I ended up editing her work and she was so great with it. And it was such an amazing feel. And I thought this is something I must be quite good at. So I started doing it for free for people on the internet. And I think people um, really liked that. And after a while, it kind of became a side business and it's just kind of developed into more and more from there as I started um, doing more courses and um, getting involved with more professional body, bodies for editing. That's amazing. So are you doing this all on your own? Yeah, primarily. I think I don't want to say all on my own because um, I think there's like three clients I've had and every day I'll get tagged in something and they'll be like, Becky's such an amazing editor, go for Becky. And I think without those people there, I would not get clients whatsoever because I am terrible at marketing and I'm terrible at talking to people and people are messaging me and two weeks later, they'll still not have a reply. <laughs> um, I'm that kind of person. I'm just so adverse to social media. So they are amazing and they will help. I know I can speak from personal experience. I don't know if I'm supposed to email you or Facebook you. I know you'll get back to me one way or another, but I'm not sure which one. <laughs> but um, no, that, that's not to say that you're not good at getting back to people. You're, you're great at that. I'm just like, I don't know which one I should talk to you on um, sometimes. Because uh, I think me as a business owner, I tend to lean on social media a lot because I kind of have to. Um, and I, I know it's, it's difficult. It's not the most fun. Um, but you, so you working with newer authors, um, something that a lot of us experience is we run into a lot of adversity, a lot of struggles along the way. You are a new editor. What have you encountered along the way and how have you gotten over it? I think one of the biggest um, tasks I've had to overcome was when I first started editing. I am a little bit of a control freak and sometimes writers would go, well, no, I don't want to go with that. And my heart would die a little bit and I'd go, but no, you, you go with my suggestion. Um, I think, you know, from personal experience, I was never like nasty about it, but I definitely would come away and be like, no, why are they doing that? That makes no sense. Don't do that. That's, um, and I kind of had to learn. I feel like it's, it's quite good because it's a selling point for me to kind of pivot around writers. They'll say to me, well, no, I want this in my work. And I'll go, right, well, let's figure out how we can get it in your work and we can get it so it's good and it's a part of the work and it's something that is undeniably needed in your manuscript. Um, and that's definitely a skill I had to learn from scratch rather than just saying to people like, this is better, do it this way. <laughs> yeah, like the water closets, right? <laughs> <laughs> So that's a, I had to bring it up. That's a that's an inside thing between me and Becky. We have this ongoing feud about water closets. So I mentioned it in uh, my what in Keeper Eight Two Nine um, when Nesha was out in Europe. I mentioned water closets. And Becky's like, no, I don't like water closets. And I've gone all over the world. I was in Mexico sending her pictures of water closets, saying it is it is a thing. <laughs> I know my, my friend said he's from America, isn't he? He went, I'm fairly sure they have WC on the toilet doors, which means water closet everywhere. He went, we just have signs of girls and boys. So <laughs> <laughs> we just have the iconography. We don't actually have. <laughs> yeah. So have I think um, something I do want to emphasize about you as an editor that I think is really awesome, especially for me, because I am a control freak as well. And when I first got your, you know, your feedback, I didn't want to go into looking at it. You know, I didn't want to get that criticism and be told, you know, all this hard work I did is messed up. Um, something I think is really refreshing. And I don't know, I haven't worked with another editor, but from what I've heard, you know, this is a little unique for you. Um, you really put your voice into the comments when you're giving feedback. And uh, it, it's actually, to a point, humorous at times because you get really invested with the characters and you'll, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll put in your emotion and you'll even, you'll, you'll step back, like a couple of times I'll see that you'll put in a comment and then you'll step back and be like, oh, never mind, you did mention it. And it, it's actually, it's like a dialogue and I really enjoy it. So I think that's something that a new writer looking for an editor, this is like a really good fit. 
Oh, thank you. I remembered reading something somewhere. I can't remember the editor. She was a very famous one. She had said, I'm so successful because I write down everything I think in the margins. Mm -hmm. So I kind of adopted that strategy. And I was like, I will write down everything I think because it'll be useful for you to see, oh, you know, Becky didn't like this there, but now, you know, and it all adds up eventually because you see exactly what a reader is thinking as they go through the work. Um, and I also think it's really important to explain yourself in comments. I have noticed sometimes I think editors who are doing it as a full-time living have to kind of rush through things um, and they don't always have the time to sit and explain and justify every comment they have because it's their job um, and they've got a lot of clients to get through but I think it's definitely something that new writers would like because if someone's just telling you this doesn't work could it you want to know why so you can change that in the future and become a better, a better writer yourself. That's awesome. So I know you have a little shortened timeline today, so I wanna dig into a couple more questions before you have to go. Um, so you are very passionate about making writing accessible to everyone. That's what I've gathered talking to you and so far today in the interview. Um, what would you like readers and writers and editors to take away from kind of your philosophy on, on things? Oh, that's a really big question and I'm not <laughs> sure how to answer it. I think in an ideal world, we would all be able to learn from one another um, and help each other out when we can. As far as I'm aware with what I've learned is I've got a skill and if it can help someone else with their voice and their work, then I have to use it to help them. Um, the same way that that writer is then using their voice and their work to help a cause or help um, an issue that they've come across in their lives. But... I think um, everyone does that in their own way. And unfortunately, we live in a world where people have to make money and have to meet deadlines. And it's not always feasible for all editors to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, now driving into the personal experience component, like what about your what about your personal experiences has really developed you as an editor and a writer? I think what's developed me most is because I was a working class student who went into university um, and I remembered before going in I'd get you know the teacher saying to me you know that it's 50 grand a debt what working class students going to want that they're never going to have the links to get into a job that's going to make enough to even pay that off um, in England I think you get a 30 year limit and then the debt's written off because you mm -hmm they just assumed you're never going to pay it and you're going to die. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I just remember thinking there's such a huge difference between the classes and I'm in a really fortunate position where I've managed to overcome obstacles put in my way to get where I wanted to be but unfortunately not everyone's going to be in that position to do that. Some people have had to pick more um, practical jobs like nursing, midwifery, teaching so that they can get a job that's more viable in the industry whereas the creative roots it's a big risk to take because your chances are you won't get a job that you want to do there and um, if you do it won't be as high paying so I definitely wanted to try and overcome that in any way I could for other writers out there who are trying to get their voices out. That's awesome so I know that just getting to know you personally I know you dabbled in a bunch of different things and it, it really shows your flexibility with you know kind of approaching the professional world um, could you talk a little bit about that, like how you had to, you know, implement or integrate uh, flexibility to kind of get to where you are now? Yeah. Is this in general in life? Yeah, just, just oh, in general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. I'm trying to think. I think I had a baby in university and I definitely had to be flexible there because I had to try and meet classes and do my studies. I remember when I had my child, it was a big thing to me. Um, to get a job and to start becoming my own person because I was quite young when I had the child um, and I thought I don't want to become ex's mum that was the thing with me I still want to be Becky um, it was just something that I always thought I need these two separate identities and they're both as important as one another it's not like being ex's mum is more important than being Becky being Becky and being ex's mum are equal and they both need the time and attention and that was something that I definitely had to try to integrate into a schedule so I could still do my studies and get to where I wanted to be and to get the job I wanted and to be the person I wanted to be outside of just being a mother and also trying to get this little person to where they needed to be in life oh yeah <laughs> I know the parenting life it's very difficult <laughs> uh, I commend you for that but um <laughs> 
on the professional side, so coming out of university, I know you're working on building this business and starting a business is very difficult, no matter where you are, no matter what industry you're in. Um, have you had to say work for someone else or balance another job to get this up and going? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I had to do a lot of free work. <laughs> Sorry, I should have just said that in the first place. I went a bit off track. Yeah, I had yeah, to do okay. a lot of free work for lots of different people. Um, I did a lot of reviews for free. Um, I remember for ages I used to do just these little reports just for people to leave feedback on my page about how I worked with them and things. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was quite a long while, easily a year, before I managed to get payment for something. Oh, um, really? So it's yeah, I think when you're trying to start a business, so if you're going out there on your own, you definitely need to give yourself a viable timeline because um, you're, you're not going to become an overnight success or have, you're not even going to meet the breadline probably right away. You, you need to build up slowly and gradually because it's the client base you're trying to tap into and everyone's sick of advertising and they're sick yeah. of you know they they don't want they don't want to know <laughs> so yeah it's, it's something difficult. something i learned as a business owner is you know you need to celebrate those small wins so like you just got your website up and going you got your logo like you see it behind me a uh, beautiful logo you know like little things like that you know we we tend to as just people overlook those you know we're like oh it's not a big deal it's just something small it's part of part of the you know whole whole system but we got to celebrate those little wins to keep motivated to continue going have you found that as well yeah yeah I, I remembered I used to well, it was the opposite way with me I think every time I got to like as a major point in the business I was too scared to go ahead because I'm like no this is becoming a bit too real for me I still <laughs> want to be in I don't want to do a business I just want to curl up um so I remember the guy who did the logo for me is called Robert Harrison um he's on my website for details I remember he had said to me no Becky sign up get it done once it's done you will not regret it you will be so happy when it's just like the anticipation it's like the suspense before the scary movie starts yeah. you need to just power through it so um I, I signed up that weekend and I got it done that's awesome well, I know we're running short on time, so I want to ask you one more question. What would you recommend to young writers to help them basically kind of find their voice and break into the industry? The biggest thing you can do is to set yourself limits or rules to your writing and to try and work around them. So if you sat down and you think you're someone who writes without any voice, if you think you're a bit boring, then say to yourself, right, you've got to write as if you are an 18th century princess and you've really got to tap into her character and what kind of lexics she'd use and all of that stuff. And I think by doing that, you're starting to learn what other different voices um, people have, what features you can add into a voice to differentiate yourself and by totally stepping out of yourself and making yourself right as someone else, you're also then learning what comes naturally to you because you're thinking, I wouldn't write like this, I'd write it like this. This doesn't feel natural to me, I want to write it like this. And you're learning how you would naturally talk. Now, what about the Google wizard that tells us all these things of how many words per paragraph and how many words per chapter? Like, Should we, should we listen to that or should we just do our own thing? I, I, I've said this to a lot of clients, Google's given you what people would expect from a first time author, um, someone who hasn't write, written before. And that's because chances are you're not going to be super, super good. You're going to still be finding your feet. You're going to be finding your voice. You're going to be learning things. It's a little bit like if you first get a job, you're not like going to be brilliant at it. You're going to go through a training period. And that's why I think it's it's good to have these standards because you kind of know if you're hitting the mark and the nail on the head or not. I think um, as an editor, if I see something above 80,000 words for a romance, something in my head's going, well, you know, this person hasn't written a book before, there might be something going wrong here. Mm -hmm. um, which, I mean, you do get some brilliant authors who are very, very skilled and they've done something differently and it works. But like nine out of 10 times, it's someone who's doing something wrong. They might have written a historical fiction more than they have a romance, or they might have focused too much on the narrative and have way too much detail. There's loads of things that could happen, but there's definitely little red flags there. And I think Google's just showing you what the red flags could be. 
um, okay. which would be useful to look out for if you're new to writing. Okay, awesome. Well, that was wonderful advice. And I encourage everyone who uh, who's watching today to contact Becky. All of her links are gonna be located down below. She's a phenomenal editor, a wonderful person. I greatly enjoy working with her and it's truly been my pleasure. Um, so I encourage everyone to reach out to Becky um, at your earliest convenience. Um, Becky, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, bless the honor. The honor's been mine, honestly. It's been lovely. Thank you. And I, I hope to have you again soon. We'll, we'll follow you on your, on your journey and definitely have you <laughs> back as a guest again. Um, especially with, you know, yeah, we, we continue having my series going on. We got what, another two books to go. So uh, we're going to be working with, working together for a while. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. So everyone who's watching today, uh, if you like the uh, interview today, definitely click subscribe. Uh, we have a whole lot of other authors, creatives, editors on this channel. More to come. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and read more and write mindfully.